Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Asong Hee Han, and I'm very excited to share our study about what students want to know while taking uh, massive open online courses and MOOCs. Um, in this short paper, we examined massive open online course MOOC students' needs based on online forum discussions uh, from universal design for learning approach. So as you may already know, online forums are a very popular way for students to engage in open dialogues about courses. These forums generate massive amount of data which researchers can analyze um, using NLP techniques um, and gain some insights into students' learning. Um, so um, until now, um, and also the previous presenter uh, touched on, uh, many researchers have been used um, LDA, uh, a LDA technique, but uh, nowadays, um, you know, uh, more people are using BERT because it's um, utilizing the use context as well. So uh, that was our uh, main motivation to use uh, BERT in this study. Um, because MOOC attracts so many people uh, with a diverse background from all around the world, um, we applied the UDL approach in this analysis. This allowed us to investigate a practical implication of our findings uh, for students with varying needs. Um, by uh, using topic analysis, which we combined with topic modeling and the qualitative analysis, um, we, try, we try to identify the most important um, areas of students' interest in MOOCs. Um, UDL, so what's UDL? Um, shortly uh, saying um, UDL is a design principle but also framework for creating accessible learning ex experience for all students. So um, incorporating UDL into MOOC design uh, helps to accommodate diverse students by providing options for success strategy and learning material formats and core participation methods. Uh, this current study used UDL to investigate the practical implications of students' needs, especially using um, these, okay, uh, from uh, these three uh, principles on the top. Um, so UDL is, um, generally speaking, it's, pro it's trying to provide more options for the students. So it could be about the means of engagement or means of present representation or means of action and expressions. So in this study, we uh, specifically had two research questions. So first one was what topic have emerged among the students and staff and, and instructors in course support forums of MOOCs? And what are the practical implications of the emerged topic themes that course providers can meet in the practice? So uh, we collected the forum discussion logs from Moodle Learning Management System at a uh, journalism online learning center that offers MOOCs in English, Spanish, and Portuguese. But for the current study, we only used uh, uh, courses provided in English. Um, and um, the three different uh, forum data set were incorporated uh, in a course from 21 different courses, which were provided uh, from 2017 to 2022, yeah, until last year. Uh, and as you see over here, uh, since it was about, um, the courses are all about uh, professional development for um, professional journalists. Uh, the course, all topic varies, uh, but within the uh, domain of journalism. So um, to ensure our data we analyzed is uh, correctly indicating students' needs. Uh, first, you know, in, in the prep um, stage, we eliminated all the codes and the tags and uh, also eliminated the one or two words post. So uh, what we really uh, played with was um, 16, uh, around 16,000 sentences with around 200,000 words. So on average, uh, one post um, consisted of uh, four sentences with 57 words. 
So uh, here I wanted to show you uh, what kind of forum data we uh, collect collected. So under course Apple menu, um, under FAQ page, there were three uh, different forums in every course. So the first one is directed to um, instructors to respond to students' questions. And the second one is for casual uh, conversations between students. And the last one is directed to the uh, course providers. So uh, they can respond to uh, the students' questions um, posted under uh, this um, forum site. So um, these are the data processing steps that uh, were used to determine students' needs um, in the forum discussion using uh, topping modeling. So as we mentioned, we used uh, BERT uh, in the topping modeling, but uh, before we get into that main course, we've been through uh, these two uh, pre-steps, like uh, language detection and translation and stop word removal. And um, you know the topping modeling itself had um, sub steps, three of them, and um, these are the typical uh, steps that people go through for um, topping modeling using BERT. So um, yeah, uh, being mindful of time, I'm not going to touch uh, all the details, but yeah, you can always refer to our write up. Uh, and this way, uh, in the topping modeling part, we found nine topic clusters. Um, the, so we, uh, based on the topic clusters we found, and, and also the first uh, presenter showed what you can expect from the topping modeling, right? Uh, there are some uh, keywords uh, coming from the topping modeling result, and using that, we conducted qualitative analysis. So um, we, we try to determine the themes associated with, with each topic. So to ensure the accuracy of our finding, we refined and validated our themes using a randomly selected forum host as well after. And also uh, we went through a validation process by uh, doing like with the tentative topic themes we uh, constructed, we also validated um, the themes, whether it's uh, aligning well with our tentative theme by uh, randomly selecting posts as well. So all the process of validation and constructing were done uh, with, uh, with more than two researchers. And after we uh, defined uh, all the themes, uh, we also uh, sought you know, insight from the uh, research site uh, with a course coordinator who has you know, much expertise in um, interacting with the students and, and doing some you know, uh, support work uh, to see if it well correlates to uh, what she knows about their needs. Uh, so here, uh, what you are seeing is the first uh, pre-processing result. That the first uh, step we've been through was uh, language detection and translation. So as you see over here, we found 20 different languages were used in writing the forum posts. Uh, at this point, I want to remind you that what we are collecting from was all provided in English course. But, uh, but uh, you know, some people use their own language or different languages in expressing their opinions. And here is the uh, topic cluster that we gained after uh, finalizing the topic modeling part. Um, the integer from one to nine uh, represents topic clusters and the label minus one indicates the post that not assigned to uh, any identified clusters. Um, yeah, I, I can talk more about that, but yeah, uh, let me go <laughs> to the different slide because uh, yeah, it, it, it can get you know, long and what we were really focusing on was the implication part. So these are the topic themes uh, and the results show that the students interest in community building among Latin American journalists, journalists was the most dominant theme um, and which we could also um, uh, connect this to the third principle of UDL uh, meaning providing multiple means of action and expression. Uh, we also identified uh, eight 
topic themes and also their relevance to the UDL principle in the parentheses on the table. So what all these mean? That's the most important part for us. What can we do to satisfy their needs? So our analysis show that um, the themes identified through the topic analysis um, suggested several ways that course providers can enhance their learning experience. So the first aspect is um, yeah, offering multiple channels uh, and platforms for student engagement to create robust regional communities. It was related to the topic one, two, six that we found and we could see uh, students who want to yeah, students want to um, collaborate with others and, and they were looking for some groups that they can engage uh, in their professional work or just for, uh, you know, uh, just for just human, human touch and, and they just want to talk, somebody who understand them. And the second aspect is uh, they are looking for uh, the ways of act and express of their learning activities that apply to their practices. So they want to show their work using the course activities in their um, professional work. And also they want to see others. Uh, they want to see how others are doing, utilizing what we've learned in the courses. And the third implication was, uh, is about extending information representation methods, meaning um, Students want to uh, know some information uh, that already um, provided for them, but uh, they just want to know in the real time. The simple little things, but very important for them to complete the course or to tackle the activity um, that they need to uh, submit as assignment. So we found uh, providing like uh, NLP chatbot that um, based on their context, they can get the um, answers from uh, is necessary to improve their um, experience. So to summarize, uh, we identified dominant topic themes of a MOOC students' needs through topic modeling and qualitative analysis, what we call topic analysis as a whole. And we also provided some suggestions that what uh, MOOC providers can do in their practice. And also uh, in the in analysis, we uh, included non-native English users raw data as well. Uh, so we tried to see uh, what kind of minority voices uh, being uh, existent over there. And uh, we found that what we did as topic analysis could be replicable not only for the forum discussion, uh, but also for open-ended survey data analysis as well. Actually, we are doing uh, this uh, with another project, but using the topic analysis method that we use for forum discussion. And uh, lastly, uh, we utilize the UDL approach to offer suggestions for creating more accessible learning experience for MOOC students. But uh, we are not there yet. Uh, we uh, found you know, there are some limitations in future directions, like we need to utilize more data types in, in next need assessment. And also, in the quality of analysis part, uh, we found that we could do it better, better in a systemic way. So uh, we also mentioned in the write-up, and also uh, last part is something uh, quite burning question in my mind, how to do this better. So uh, we found some um, examples. So you see over here, this is definitely not English, but um, students um, say something, uh, say what, uh, what they think in their own native language. And when you think about you know, um, using your native language in open um, places like forum discussions, it's not necessary, but it could be intentional. So here, um, uh, the student's post uh, roughly translates to uh, like this. As one of principal of UNESCO, the institution directed me to this course, and I would like to say that our wraps an essential part of global cultural di uh, diversity and the basis for the existence of current sciences. So um, in this um, 
short paper uh, study, we didn't uh, dig in what this means or what the intention it is, but we found it would be uh, really meaningful to see um, the intention of this kind of remarks because it could point to their needs. Um, yeah, so I think my time's up, and uh, yeah, I, I am, uh, I'm, I'm very hopeful that uh, you found this um, presentation is a little bit informative and a little bit engaging. And if I may, <laughs> yeah, uh, I am in the current, uh, I, I am in the um, job market currently, <laughs> so yeah, I want to pitch a little bit because I was inspired by others doing that, and I didn't plan to when I was um, planning for this. But yeah, if your organization or if you are looking for somebody uh, who, uh, who's been like creative problem solver uh, using, you know, uh, rooted in deep in discipline, uh, disciplinary um, theories, um, yeah, I might be your person. So yeah, please give me some emails. Okay, that's Thank it, you. yeah. <laughs>